if you take the discus where you think you will, where do you think you'll take the discus? A pretty good hammer thrower too. Set yeah. silver at the Commonwealth Games, yeah. right? Yeah. So what's the what's the future of hammer for Matt Denny? <laughs> <laughs> this is a very often asked question. It depends. It really depends. Like, I do miss it sometimes. I do enjoy the feeling of you can't beat the feeling of just absolutely destroying a hammer and the whip. And the cool part about when I used to throw at home was, you know, you'd wake up, go to, walk down, start training at eight o'clock. And no, it was just dead silent. Like small country town, we're about about three k's out of town, and you couldn't hear a thing. It was just dead silent. A few birds, all that sort of thing. And and when I was throwing the five k, so I was like consistently throwing 80, 83 meters with the five. And the cool part about it was was you'd throw, you'd hear it was so quiet, you'd hear the whip when you deliver. You'd hear it whipping in the air, and then you would hear this <whistles> boom, and there's just this big explosion when it hit the ground out there. And that was so cool, I used to love that. One of the main things why I left it was, one, because of what I want to achieve this year, or last year and especially this year with Tokyo, but also the fact that, one, it's not in Diamond League. As much as we all want to love the sport, you got to, if you want to try and make money from it, you've got to be smart with your decisions, right? A lot of people were surprised I went straight to disc, but I felt like I had more to offer in disc at that point in time, and, well, Diamond Leagues were around. I was lucky I got a Diamond League in last year. And then that got taken away from me, so kind of, there's no real win-win situation here at the moment. So we still we still have the Continental Series, which is okay. Yeah, it just it just depends. Like if I get to where I want to go with disc in the next two years, then a while it'll it'll take a while for me to go back to Hammer. But I still want to break 80 with the with the seven. Like I. I felt that was possible in 2018. I felt that I, I had 77s and 70, 78s that year in training, especially that week, two weeks leading into Com Games. But yeah, Com Games, I just, I just didn't deliver. Like I was in peak form, but warmed up with 77s and stuff like that, and with ease. But then just tightened. I think the occasion just got to me a bit, and especially with Hammer, like Hammer's one of those things if you tighten. It just affects your whole throw. Compared to disc where you can kind of get away with it a little bit. Yeah, just, just little stuff. Like if you're back, then your orbit's just completely shifted and you're stuck. Yeah, I don't know. Hopefully within the next 10 years, I don't know. I seriously don't, but I do miss it. And it, it was good fun. And yeah, I don't know. It depends. Take it as it comes, really. Okay, so you just said something interesting, which, which I think is a good point. You said, if you take the discus where you think you will, where do you think you'll take the discus? I've always wanted to be in the 70 meter club. Seven, like, world record, 74 is huge. And obviously, the only guy that's really gonna mainly touch that at the moment, like Dakar is throwing well, and he had that 70 this season, but I think if anyone's gonna get it, especially this year, it'd be Daniel. Especially if he pieces together the throws that he has there, and gets that complete peak together. Yeah, I, I definitely want to get within within the 70 club in the next two years. You know, it's big big aspirations and stuff and people will laugh at me for saying it, but I think it's possible, especially after like the way that I've progressed over the last two years and what we're finding in training, what works, really grooving stuff in is the be is the exciting part over the last three months. We've just, just grooved and grooved and grooved and progressed really well, so you know, I'm already throwing as far as what I was when I was in peak form before Doha. And Doha was in September and we're only in January. So it just depends. It depends on how smart I am with my training, how well we progress and all that sort of thing. But yeah, I think I, do, I want to hit 70 within, you know, by 20 and or by 2021, I think it'd be awesome. Yeah, give the boys a run for their money at least. So. That being said, what do you think is going to be the technical change for you to go to 70? I used to have it really, I had it leaps and bounds when I was younger, but I need to bring it back a little bit more, is my separation of the throw. I still have a lot, of, like, I can reef on them really well, and I have good speed in my throw, even under load currently. But yeah, it's just, it's just creating more separation and drive off my right leg, sweeping out of the back. And then my position landing into the center, letting my hips go more, 
and just just extreme amounts of extension through the delivery and staying on the floor. I think they're my key ones currently, and just and just progressing, like just getting stronger. Like I'm, I think out of the the guys in on well, the top six currently, like from Doha, and me being six, I think I'd probably be the weakest for sure. You've got Daniel taking sumos the three twenties, like it's nothing. Oli is still in three twenties, like it's nothing. Dakar is same thing; he's in the three hundreds. I've got maybe two eighty under my belt. The boys have all benched two hundred. I haven't. All that kind of thing. Um, I think if I get my strength up to there, I find that my technique will push me ahead of ahead of it. So, yeah. Like, it just depends. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm going to go out and beat Daniel and and Frederick in you know the next three months and all that sort of stuff. But I definitely think that. If I do the right things, the future's pretty good and pretty exciting for me in that like we don't really know what my limit is. So it's that it's that kind of situation. So that is so distracting. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. Are they doing I don't know what this is. They're like some it's a serious prayer is what's going on. What do you think is the biggest technical flaw in your throw? Probably the main one is just my early right, uh, like when I'm landing, just pre-turning my right when I'm landing in my power position. Yeah, so I'm landing probably, if the back of the circle is 12 o'clock, I'm probably landing, if, depending on the throw, between three and three and two. 2018 I was probably landing at 12, but at the moment I'm just not getting my hips in enough. I think it'll, I think it'll, when I'm fresher and I'm get a bit more focused on switching my hips in into when I get into my delivery position, then it'll be better. But like currently it's that late landing right and probably maybe a little bit overactive left out of the back. It's good at some points, but then sometimes it's a bit sweep and then pull instead of sweep and then relax into it a bit more. I think they're my main two that I that I really am conscious of. But I'm I'm pretty, I'm extremely happy with my throw. Like yeah, just small refinery refining stuff now. That was one of the things we were looking at. Was like oh he's you know that definitely you could see I think if you can turn around that because yeah. you turn your hip you turn extremely well clearly. Yeah. But you could see if it was you know another sixty to ninety degrees. Your tip's gonna turn that much faster yeah. and it's gonna be ahead. When I'm throwing well and I get this technical cue down well, I should be able to keep more open left and pushing across my, like staying on my left axis and then keep my hips open longer, which will create a bit more tension, a bit more drive out of the back, which will then lead to a better pre-turned right and then more hips in the deliveries and the delay of the shoulders, so just getting a bit more X factor of separation through the throw. They're my main things. My orb, I'm happy with my orbit currently. Still playing around with that chest up and balance between the right foot to go into my block. I just find that works really well for me is if I do that, then I can just, I place my left in quicker, better contact times and quicker reversal into the delivery. It's not a land and hit, it's a continue and rotate. So yeah, that's that's my main things, I think. Right now, this year, obviously, you, you competed in a number of meets in Europe, the World Championships. What's it like for you being the young guy competing against, I mean, this year we had two 70 meter throwers. Yeah. Between Daniel and Frederick. Yeah. They, they, those two were by far the best this year, by far. You know, there was a couple of boys that had some good throws. Tokyo could be really interesting if everyone gets their timing and their peak right. Personally, I think maybe, I don't know how Ollie's programming works or whatever, but maybe he went too early. I don't know if he had conditions or not, but you know, the 67 and then he had the 66 in Stockholm, but then only 63 in Doha. Mate, he's doing well as well. Like he's only a year older than me and he's, kill he's killing it as well. So, I don't know, it's it's tight. Yeah, but Daniel, Daniel and Frederick are just standouts. Like they just killed it. And like being the young guy in that group, I'm not intimidated by that. I enjoy the fact that yeah, I've, I've got it. Doha was your season's best. Yeah, exactly. And in yeah, a stadium right. at yeah. the world, the, the world championship, so that says a lot about yeah, well, you. I think Doha proved that anyone's beatable, and that it's Tokyo could be cl clearly anyone. In saying that, though, if Daniel is on his day and he's in peak, yeah. he's going to be very untouchable. So it's 
Depends who shows up. That's that's the awesome part about comp. Like everyone thought Daniel was going to throw seventy and three sixty seven. Nothing against him, but like you know, it's just that kind of thing. Everyone was some. I was up on Doha. I threw really well. Some people were down. Like it's just that cool part about competition. Who's going to show up and get their their training programs right? I definitely want to beat those guys. Like I'm not going there to get second or third or whatever. Like if I connect everything and I can perform when it counts who knows what could happen so yeah it's exciting i like competition like i like going against these guys that are older than me and kind of being i guess the underdog from down under sort of thing kind of thing so yeah it's fun i love it and i love learning off those guys as well you what well, you go and watch the top 12 like everyone's so different technically same essence of throws but no one's exactly yeah, the same. everybody has a different so style, different style. Oh, so right. it's interesting to learn why people do that so like Say for the vice hiding it. Very different start, very different swing. And saying, well, dude, like, why do you do that? Like, not saying that it's a bad thing, but, you know, well, maybe my, if I try it, it might work. If it doesn't, then sweet, I'm, at least I tried it. Instead of just going very straight down the line, this is my way sort of thing. To beat the best, you gotta learn from them and then use it against them. So, yeah. <laughs> Cues create specific muscle sequencing. So, for example, one of the things we're gonna talk about is that one of the common cues is 